Hey friends, it's Dimitri with Rubashka Streetwear. So I haven't made a video in my car in a while, but I was driving home and I tried to set up my phone on some sort of tripod kind of, not a tripod, but some kind of phone mount I jerry-rigged together. It didn't work out, so I had to uh, park and stabilize my phone, otherwise it would shake in the video. But anyways, I wanted to talk about a lot of things um, that have been going on with my brand and business. So today, it's the five-year anniversary of me launching the Rubashka website, which has been a lot of fun. Five years is half a decade. That's a quite a bit of time. And I'm also, I'm not making this video in my office because I'm, uh, I'm headed to go see my wife. So the past week I've been taking care of her and because she has a ruptured appendix. So that has been a trip uh, that's been a lot of stress and, you know, focusing on that. I have not been really uh, working on my brand as much, obviously, um, during those during this past half week. But she's recovering, so I am trying to get back into the groove of things and also still helping her out. So a lot has been going on. Um, let's see, we're gonna do a State of the Union <laughs> address. So the first thing is that I am having some very uh, fr frustrating times with my suppliers. <laughs> so my main supplier that has been printing my t-shirts for these past five years, they've done a great job, I really like them. And I couldn't have gotten where I am today without them because they've been obviously making good quality products that I can sell to you guys. But they've been like very strange um, this past month. Lots of uh, or barely any communication, a lot of delays, and they've like ghosted me the past week. I have no idea where any of my stuff is, um, what's where projects are in queue. So that's been frustrating um, because I have, it's hard for me to post product photos, to make promotions, to post content on social media, to uh, get stuff prepared for drops because I do drops month by month, not season. And that's how I make income for the month to pay my bills and then to keep the brand growing. And because people, you know, even when I was uh, in high school and college, I would always buy, you know, a piece of clothing or two every month. Um, you know, I'd buy, when it's summer, you buy like a sh some shorts or tank top. Uh, and then, you know, springtime, buy a t-shirt and winter, you buy a jacket or something. So it's, it's always been like people buy clothes frequently. And when I have it month by month, it's really nice because I can cater to a lot of people around the world, obviously. Um, so that's been a really frustrating. I went out and I was actually looking for a third supplier because I have two suppliers. The first one, they do exclusively screen printing and that's the who the guys I was talking about right now. Then my second supplier, they do all my embroidery projects, but they also do screen printing on the side. And uh, But they don't have every screen printing service that the first one has. So I was like, man, I was talking to uh, Michael. I was like, hey, I got to get a third supplier. I got to get another backup <laughs> because uh, that's kind of a piece of advice for you guys. Make sure you have a second supplier and a third supplier lined up to help you guys out. That way, it's also good for when you're expanding because one of the things I've noticed is that as I've been growing my brand over five years, I've been having a lot of stuff being made. When I started my brand out the first year, so since we're celebrating five years today, I'm gonna tie this all in. When I started out my first year, I was making like maybe a couple dozen t-shirts uh, a month. And now we're making hundreds and hundreds, several hundred a month. Uh, usually every drop we're releasing probably around 400, maybe that's the average items a month right now with in inventory quantities and that is steadily rising and rising so i've kind of noticed that i've been giving my original suppliers from when i started my brand i've been giving them maybe a lot of work to do and this is one of the problems i mentioned this in another video as well 
if you are using a supplier, you got to remember that they are also printing other people's stuff and they also have other projects that are even more. Um, my suppliers, I remember I talked to them once in a while, they would be like, oh yeah, I work on a project and we're making 1700 t-shirts, you know, that's probably one third or whatever the size of what I usually do. So they're obviously busy with stuff. So that's important to know if you are starting a brand and you are steadily growing, make sure that you are starting to think of using better or larger manufacturers to, to um, alleviate that pressure off your original one. Or, you know, as you have growing pains, you got to figure out that trajectory and uh, scale your brand that way. For me, since I'm not really, so if you're printing on like t-shirts and hoodies, that's not really like a complicated thing, especially if you're using pre-made uh, readily av available blanks. That's uh, that's what I use. I'm not making like my own exactly custom blanks. I just use uh, really de decent quality blanks that people like and I like myself. So that means that uh, virtually, you know, not every single uh manufacturer or, or printer in your town will have the same quality but in general if they've been around for a while that means they are going to be printing to a good standard of quality which means that they that, that that means that if you use one supplier and if you have them print another batch of the same stuff with a different supplier they're probably going to be very close and similar in quality uh, similar quality so um, that's that's the thing that's why it's good to have backups so yeah, it's uh, it's been wild. I think, so the first year when I started my brand, it was a lot of sleepless nights and I was very tired, but it was a lot of fun and I just learned a ton my first year. I did, I barely made any sales. Like honestly, like I think I, honestly, I think I didn't even break a thousand bucks on my first year of sales because here's a piece of advice because I did not focus on marketing and growing my brand. I had the bad mindset that a lot of young, uh, younger people have when they start a brand is that they make a product and they think that people will uh, flock to your brand, but that's not really how it works. You have to gain the audience's attention and gra grab them and bring them into your brand, not they are going into your brand by themselves. So that's, that's the one thing, I, the biggest thing I learned in year one. After I learned that in year two, things started to pick up and I started to make uh, more stuff, ex expanding stuff, uh, more sales. I think in that year, I was in the double, not the double, I was probably in the thousands range with sales. Still not enough, not obviously not enough to uh, support yourself and, and have that be your career. But, you know, that was fun. Then in the third year, that's when I think the third year was the most fun I've ever had doing the brand. And I'll explain more about that. But that's when I released, I started doing custom products from like uh, China because uh, that's an easy way to make stuff that are more customized. I got my sales into double digits, like tens of thousands of dollars in sales. I think that's what I did. And then... Yeah, then um, I was reading lots of books. I was growing personally as a person in year three. That's what I really liked about it. I remember just long nights. I would stay in my apartment. It was so fun. I would be like <laughs> chugging energy drinks as well, uh, doing that. I still, it's, it's kind of weird. I have really fond memories of when I lived in a crappy apartment by myself and I was just working on my brand all day and it was just growing a lot. But right, right now I have, you know, I'm married. I have a, a nice apartment that I live in. I have a, a nice car that's all paid off that I'm sitting in here. This is my uh, new car um, before I had my other car. And then around year three in the middle of it, COVID happened, which had its pros and cons. But COVID kind of tail spun into year four. That's when, and year four was really... Um, it was good and bad, to be honest. It was good because sales got into the um, six digits. And it was becoming like, basically, I could support myself, pay my bills. And that would be like my source, my main source of income. 
and things were really stabilized and it was still growing but it wasn't I wasn't growing as a person and my brand I wasn't growing it as much as I wanted to that was the thing and I was dealing with a lot of severe anxiety that I've had anxiety over my life but year four was was rough because of just personal reasons and I had a bunch of health problems and um just the whole atmosphere of COVID was really just debilitating for me. I'm not, like, for me, I'm not afraid of uh, COVID or all that stuff. I already had it. It's not really, a, it wasn't a big deal for me. And I'm a young person. I'm healthy. But it was, it's just the overall state of the globe. It, like, really gets to your head. And especially if uh, I was binging on the news a lot during that time. Um, well, I always have been doing that. But that was, that was just difficult. I wasn't really pumping enough energy into the brand during year four, I, to be honest, and it was hard. Now we're on year five, we're into the new year, 2022. There has been some really big ups and some really bad downs. The first one was that the first month of 2022 was my my biggest um, sales of any month. We I went to the into the 20s, like over 20k in revenue which is like awesome that's like almost more than <laughs> my second year of business <laughs> when I wasn't really marketing or anything like that and then um now we're then we had February and March but and those were decent months too but then um like I said I had more like health issues I've had to deal with then my wife got appendicitis I've been I've been better about my anxiety but um and then this month has been kind of wild and like I said, with my suppliers, it's just uh, the one thing that's very frustrating to me right now is that during year three and four, I was super on top of shipping stuff out within 24 hours because my suppliers would get stuff in um, at a reasonable time. They'd always get stuff in, done within two to three weeks of me placing an order with them, which meant that I had a good week of prep for a drop day uh for the month and then that would go well and i could send stuff out but honestly the past this this beginning of the year and the tail uh, like half of last year <clears throat> they've been just really bad with getting stuff out on time and they have just not been communicating as well they're still making the the, the quality still good it's just those two things i believe it's because they have staffing issues and also uh, which is related to COVID as well but the problem is when issues arise in your brand, you have to acknowledge it and be like, okay, I know this is a problem, but how am I going to solve it, right? And that, and this obviously goes back towards me. Now, I have this issue. I'm not getting stuff in time and customers are waiting longer to receive items instead of me shipping it out within 24 hours. I've been doing more pre-orders and stuff has been just not being... Because I can't get the stuff in, then I can't send it out. But I have to make sales for the month to... Uh, pay for the business and to <laughs> pay my bills my personal bills so that's been the the main issue it's I just hate doing that I really like I truly if a customer doesn't get their stuff and they're not happy it like honestly hurts me inside I honestly care about my customers a lot I try to answer dms and emails on time I try to uh, be uh, get stuff out on time I try to make good quality I never ever want to skimp on customers. That's like the one of the main pillars of my brand is customer service, quality, and then uh, just fun, good design stuff like that. Those were like th three like core pillars of my brand. So I know it's getting kind of dark, and this video is getting really fuzzy. But this is kind of the state of the union of my brand, and I just want to tell you how it's been going for me. Um, that's also kind of the reason why I haven't been making as many videos as I would like to this past, uh, the beginning of this year and the last year. I think I have over 100 videos on this channel. Uh, I'm going to have to check on that, but, or something close to that, which is good. But honestly, I wish I'd be like in the 300s or something like that. I know my content isn't always the best edited or I don't have all these fancy slides and transitions and music and all that stuff, but I try to 
you know, pump out stuff that's real and authentic. I don't sugarcoat stuff. I don't um, try to sell you guys anything that's fake about my story or brand. This is just real how it is. So I hope that that is at least something that you like about this channel um, is that I'll give you really down to earth advice and stuff that's realistic. I'm not going to uh, be super clickbaity and stuff like that. I never want this channel to be like that. But um, yeah, I know it's getting grainier and grainier, so I'm going to try to end this. But anyways, that's kind of uh, where my life has been um, and why stuff is the way it is. I hope that that kind of explains my mindset and my just the way I am at this moment in life. And I hope that you got some advi good advice out of this video about how it was from year one to five. I uh, pray to God that I can just keep delivering on good products and uh, try my best and ex keep expanding the brand. I really want to, I really want to get a good solid footing with the brand this year and like establish it even more and and really expand um, towards the tail end of this year and into 2023. I really want the brand to be something bigger and better. Um, I have a map of what needs to happen for that to happen. And I will be sharing that with you guys over the next month, exactly what my kind of strategies are for this year to make this channel better and to make my business better. So anyways, I hope you guys uh, liked this state of the union um, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.